Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your time to join us today and to listen to our story about these exciting projects. You have received quite a bit of information already earlier this morning on what centers of vocations are. So I decided to make this concept of platforms as concrete as possible. I will introduce you in the amazing world of water in the impact we expect to make with the centers of vocational excellence. Water, H2O. You drink it from the bottle. You drink it from the tap. It falls from the sky. Uh, you use it to clean your car. And you take it for granted that's there. But at the same time, water is one of the main concerns for the future of the world. Although Europe isn't exactly the Sahara, we face many problems in this regard. Um, in my presentation, I should have shown you now some pictures about the next topics. It's too dry in Europe every now and then. It's sometimes too wet. Parts are located beneath sea level and providing fresh water and cleaning wastewater and pollutions are also topics. And if it's not enough, an aged workforce with new, a little new employees are coming in. Issues that will affect uh, you all if we do not do something about it. These organizations, they will show up in just a second, there they are, uh, have to meet these issues head on in the various regions, but also on a transnational level to learn from each other's experiences and to support each other. Our region, our organization is part in an innovative ecosystem around water in Leeuwarden, in the north of the Netherlands. Our regional partners, VETSES, and the Center of Expertise in Water Technology, already have a solid international network with water experts in Europe. To establish our POV water project, we use this network. This has a positive effect both on our project activities and on the position of VET in the water innovative ecosystems in all Europe regions. Until now, VET often plays uh, a minor role in these networks. Both water changes this. Now, each region has its own challenges. Malta has not enough water. Scotland has too much and how to deal with that. In Latvia, many of the water professionals will retire soon. Latvia faces a replacement issue. The Czech Republic would like to increase the number of students choosing for a career in water. And the Netherlands is, as you all know, still a few meters below sea level. So how do we make sure that our water management professionals have the right skills for the future? Each region is developing a cove water, shown on this map focusing on the relevant issues in the region. And this in close collaboration with the skills ecosystem, including companies, vocational education institutions, universities, uh, regional and local governments, drinking water companies, wastewater industries, etc. Each region has a regional captain who serves as a driver in the region and leads the activities. Given the variety of issues in the regions, there is no one size fits all solution that applies to all regions. Now, I give you an idea of the challenges we have identified, specifically for VET in the water sector of in our five region. To focus on it, in Scotland, the focus will be on upskilling and reskilling employees. The education partners intend to develop training tracks for businesses, making sure that the skills of the employees are up to date. The goal in Latvia is to recruit more students increase prestige of the water profession and raise societal, societal awarenesses about the importance of the sector. In the Czech Republic, in Brno, our partners would like to increase the collaboration between businesses and education partners. For instance, by introducing hybrid teachers that would work part-time in businesses and part-time teach, thus creating a very warm crossover between education and practice. On Malta, the focus on avoiding brain drain in the game industry and to enhance sharing of knowledge resources between industry and education. We believe that we can find a solution for the challenges through public-private partnerships in centers of vocational excellence water in each region. 
The objective of the POV water project is to establish five of these centers, including concrete action plans for collaboration. Two years is not a long time to achieve this, especially if you take into consideration how many partners are involved and how diverse these partners are. During the project period, we will take the following steps to reach our objective. Take a picture of the skills ecosystem in each region with a vocal vocational ex education scan, determining the challenge, context and stakeholders in each region. Compare in each region the outcome of the scan with the desired situation. Identify how can we help and inspire each other. Develop an action plan for each regional cove. And at the same time, we are in continuous dialogue between the five regions to identify lesson learned, opportunities for collaboration, sharing resources and creating new opportunities among the centers, making the whole more than the sum of its parts. To give you an idea of what a center can look like, here's a brief uh, movie about CIV water, my own cove water in the Netherlands. The Center for Innovative Water Craftsmanship focuses on educating employees and students to a vocational level in the field of water and is located at the Water Campus in Leeuwarden. While working with educational institutions as well as governmental agencies such as Wetterskip Friesland and Vitens, we aim to contribute to the development of outstanding water professionals, nationally and internationally. We do so by organizing courses for professionals with our water partners. The knowledge of these professionals forms the basis of our courses. Professionals share knowledge by educating each other. These new insights are used in our vocational courses. Together with Center of Expertise, Water Technology and VETSUS, CIV Water promotes lifelong learning in the water sector. ...network of over 300 public-private partnerships in the Netherlands. This model has three main functions. It helps you to specify what the added value of your activity is, the value proposition, and what is needed to achieve that. It caters the conversation between education, government and business, and all these partners live in very different worlds, using different languages and think in different speeds. You probably will recognize this from your own experience when working with a company or a school. It creates the framework for the five centers in the various, in various regions. We can compare each other's activities, thus creating a framework for the learning community that we are within the platform of Vocational Excellence Water. To give you an impression of a field business model canvas, I show you the canvas of my own center in the Netherlands. The value proposition of CIV Water is developing innovative education on the topic of water technology on that level, level EFQ 3 and 4 aimed at future craftsmen. As you can see, it is a dynamic model. We recently updated the canvas with the yellow posts during the online work session with the POVA partners. Our main aim for the future is to create a hybrid learning environment where teachers and students learn together with water sector professionals. With our kickoff in January, we have just started the project. And despite COVID-19, we are in full swing. Steps that we have been taken so far are, we held a pre-kickoff meeting in August 2019 with all partners on our own expenses to go over the project, project again uh, after the project was granted by the European Commission. This gave us the benefit to make sure everyone was on the same page spoke the same language when the project actually started last November. We completed a vocational scan of the, eco of the skills ecosystem in each region, providing us with important information of the value proposition of the coast. We started our dissemination activities, which is very important since this allows us to have an ongoing conversation with our stakeholders. And we drafted the first version of the business model canvas for each region. We did it. We did so during an online meeting, which proved to be both fun and productive, although we would have preferred to meet in person. And we are currently in the process of validating these business model canvases. 
From experience, we know it's important to keep doing this during the project to keep all partners engaged and on board. In the next 18 months, we will develop action plans and concrete steps and concrete activities that will make the significant impact on the water skills ecosystems in each region. In order to do so, we will compare the canvases of the regions and identify where we can support and strengthen each other. We will do so by developing an online platform to share education materials, form a working group with curriculum experts, and exchange the staff to learn from each other how to co-develop educational materials for and with industry. And we are also looking beyond the project period already to continue our work and scale up the platform. At the start of our activities, we evaluated the status quo by conducting a baseline measurement with all participants in the project. We will finalize the project with an impact measurement questionnaire, enabling us to make evidence-based statements and learn from the project. Now, the biggest question, what will people in the various regions notice of the impact of this project? If all goes well, and why should it not? There will be, amongst other things, there will be hybrid teachers working in both industries and education. There will be international water weeks, exchanging students and teachers between the regions. And there will be a European online platform to exchange education materials. And the number of students wanting to study in the water sector will increase. And, as one of our partners put it recently, the water sector will be sexy again. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Please feel free to contact me later on. My contact details are on the last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter, for your presentation. And indeed, we have some questions for you. There was a question regarding the relationship between the project, sustainability, and fish industry. Can you say something on that? or? Um, between uh, water and fish, yeah, usually uh, water and fish are very uh, uh, needed for each other, but uh, in our project we did not have the focus on that topic already, but, um, well, that should be discussed with my, uh, my, my, uh, uh, my partners. For now, I, I'm not having a connection. Okay, thank you, Peter. You were also talking about uh, action plans for at the regional level and I know you said that you are going to do it in the next steps but can you say something or it's still something that you have not developed? Uh, that's something we are working on but basically um, after having taken a picture of the current situation and having uh, the ideal situation in mind the differences between those two situations will be in the action plan. And that can, can uh, be on several topics, for instance, on education material, but also in a better connection between uh, industry and education. So that depends on uh, the need of each region. Okay, thank you. And one last question. There have been several questions uh, regarding if there is any possibility of other vet centers to join the platform or if it is closed. Um, no, absolutely, we're open for uh, uh, new, new partners, but as we have to take some steps occur, uh, occurring to uh, our project plan for this uh, pilot project, uh, we have to focus on uh, doing the, the, uh, well, the things we have to, we have to have, um, uh, uh, taken in our plan. And for the next phase, we're open for new partners, new business, new vet schools. Uh, but also, um, if they're willing to uh, to participate, then can, they can uh, give me uh, an email or, or contact me. Okay. So thank you very much, Peter.